Hello and welcome back to 100 Days of Code with me, Lily Code. Today is day 68, so let's continue on with Max's complete React tutorial. Um, what we were doing yesterday was just using our Redux. We've started implementing Redux and we're using Redux in order to manage the state of our application. So that's what we're at. Let's continue exactly where we left off. We have an error at the moment, but it's just because we didn't finish what we were doing. So let's do that. Just have my cup of tea. And my computer. What more does a girl need? So perfect. So what we're going to do here inside this function is we're going to what we're looking for here is checking for if is initial so we want to still use this is initial flag which is set outside of the app component itself so this will only get reset within the component so therefore it'll tell us whether or not this is the first render of the page and if it is then we don't want to worry about um you know showing this notification that we're going to show that's being tracked with managed state so only on the second load do we want to worry about these things so that's why we have this is initial boolean up here being declared outside of the file so that's what's going on and you know what i'm going to just close everything else because look at all this stuff that's going on up here so if we just right click and go to close others so i want to keep the app.js file open i'm in visual studio code here code editor so if i just right click and say close others all those other files go away so we have a bit of breathing room so we have a bit of leg space we're ready for our flight let's take off so <laughs> oh my jokes are terrible so what we're going to do is say in is initial and we're going to reset the, this in here now so then once we've come into this initial yeah once we've come in here now we know that um you know the page just ran once because this is going to happen on the first render of the page but on the very first time it's set to true so we'll know that it was the first render and then after that it'll be set to false so any subsequent renders it'll be false so great and then we'll just return as well or like as soon as we come in this will be set now so exactly <laughs> okay and then we also just need to pass in our dependencies into use effect. So our dependencies are going to be cart and dispatch because we are using dispatch or we're going to use it. So dispatch, cool. Because I don't actually see that being used in use effect yet, but we're going to need it. So all of this that we've done now is to set up an action creator, which is just a way to extrapolate out some of that Redux uh, stuff that we're doing just in order to keep it separated. And we have all the state management happen in our action creator now. So that's helpful. And now we're going to use this send cart data function. So let's do it. Okay, so wait, so in our app.js here we have send cart data. This function has been moved into our cart slice. Let's check that out. Yes, so this is actually in our cart slice, the send cart data. This is where we've made this action I was talking about. So our action creator. Yeah, so our action creator is now all in our slice we've separated out the concerns there to keep it all in our slice so actually this app.js function needs to change we don't want this in here all we want to do is check if is initial in here and then we're going to call our other function from our cart slice the one we were just looking at so our send cart data um, this is where this function is defined. So I was moving it over and I hadn't properly cleared out the app.js. This has all been moved the functionality to our cart slice. So we're going to call it from our cart slice this function, which is our action creator. Okay. 
So I'm just watching the video and making sure I'm up to scratch here. Yeah. So we have our send cart data, which is our action creator, which is in cart slice. Okay, perfect. And this, an action creator is just a function within a function. So we have an asynchronous function here, which is dispatching an action. And then we have our send request being called as well. And we're waiting for a response. And then, so we declare all this, we define all this. We went through all this yesterday. So go to yesterday's video for a more detailed run through of this. Um, but then what we do is we have this send request function that's defined up above where we're actually sending our request and we just wrap it in a try catch block. So if it fails, we show the error and if it comes back as success, we dispatch the success reducer. So that's all adding up now and let's keep looking. So now in our app.js, what we're going to do is as soon as we did use this dispatch down here, we need to use it and um, we're saying here it's a dependency that this is dependent on dispatch so we will actually implement that so we have it looks like we have one too many brackets yeah so this should not be here this should be down here because this goes after the last curly bracket like this is tagged on to the end of the use effect function that's where you add in your dependencies in an array so it should be after the very last bracket after use effect because once you've defined your function then you say what it's a dependent on with a comma and it's all wrapped in this parentheses so in here what we want to do now is dispatch and use our dispatch because we're saying we're dependent on it so we are expecting a dispatch So what we want to actually dispatch here is our send cart data function that we have our action creator in our cart slice. So in order to use this, we need to export it. So these are just all of our reducers. So this is our cart slice being uh, defined. So I'll just close some of these. There's our reducers. Okay, and here's our send cart data. So we want to export this function. Okay, so I did that slightly wrong. I still need the name of the of the function and also that it's a constant because we're declaring our function here in our function. So I'll just export this whole function and then Okay, yeah, the error went away, cool. And then we want to import it in our app.js to use it. So up to the top, this is where all of our imports are. And seeing as it's going to be. Okay, so now we will import it. So down here. So import send cart data. Yeah. I'm wondering if it should be in the object notation, but that's how Max has it. So I'm going to leave it for the moment and if he corrects it, he corrects it, but, and it's from our store. Why am I even? So do you know what? I'll just implement it because then it should auto import and see how it auto imports it because it wasn't seeming to find the path either. Cool. So what we want to do down here in our use effect is we want to dispatch this function. So we want to dispatch send cart data. Send cart data. Yeah, and that should have imported it. Great. And what we want to pass it is the actual cart. So we'll pass the cart. And let's just say, okay, so there we go. Yeah, so it did put it in the... um the object notation and it got it from the same level maybe i was trying to go up two levels and that was my problem there so great we'll add our semicolon super de duper take a sip of tea why not and continue
Okay, so when we're dispatching, um, when we're normally dispatching a function, we send in the type, the type of the function that we want to dispatch. But when you're using Redux, you can also send it a function, which is the handy bit. That's why this is an action creator. So now we're dispatching an actual function, which is then calling another function. So that's the functionality that Redux allows you to have. Whereas when we're using React, we would dispatch the type and give it the name of the function that we want to dispatch. And if you had one, you probably wouldn't even have to give it a name, I presume. But normally we have type and we call out the type and that runs a certain function. We've seen this throughout the 100 days. So do go back and have a look um, if that's helpful. Okay, cool. So let's see what happens if we reload this page. Are we stuck with an error, baby? Okay. Okay, we are. So on card slice line 65. Let's see what's going on. It says response is not defined. Excuse me, I have the hiccups. So line 65. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so we're catching our error differently now anyway, because what we're doing is we have this send cart data function, which is returning an asynchronous function called dispatch, or that's, that we're passing into it, dispatch. What's the name of this function? This is returning an object called UI action. So the first thing we do, yes, so we send the cart data, it's an anonymous function. So the first thing we do when we come into send cart data is we just dispatch um, a straightaway function that just sets the UI action show notification. So sets this object to pending. So first of all, we have a pending state. Then we come down here and we send the request, which includes our async function. That's our fetch function to put the information on the back end. Okay, and we're passing that the cart because we want to send up the items of the cart to the back end. Then we do not need this if response is not okay here because we're checking if the response is not okay down below. We have a try catch. So here we have try and we're gonna await the send request. Once everything comes back fine, then we're going to return success. And if, if we've caught an error in the process, then we're going to say that sending the cart data has failed. So I think we're doing okay. Rather than just remove that, I'm going to comment it out because I'm wondering where are we actually throwing the error now? If we don't have this, I don't know where we're throwing the error. But just seeing as it's that's giving us an error <laughs> and we seem to be handling it down below, I'll just take it out for a minute and see how we get along. So, so I just wonder, will we ever catch an error? But we can figure that out as well. So, and figure out what it is that we're missing there. So, okay, cool. Look, I added something to the cart. Success. It's been successfully added. Let's add something else. Great. Okay. And then what about if I change the URL to just cart, which definitely it won't be able to send that information to just cart. We need to have the dot JSON on the end to actually identify where it's going in the URL. If you were to change anything in here, we'll get the same error, you know, uh, it just can't, it's not the right URL for it to post to or to put the information to. We're not posting, we're putting, but they're similar. So if I reload the page and add something to the cart, okay, great. So we still do get our error. So we didn't need that. It's catching the error. 
we're getting an error thrown so grand i don't think we needed that bit of code because we did change our approach so super i must have just left out taking that bit out because we're not checking if the response is okay now we're catching it further down first of all we're seeing if it was okay and if not if an error was caught we're throwing the error so perfect that's all working and let's continue on cool so the only reason we might want to do something like this is what we've done by creating this action creator is we've taken all the logic out of the component so we don't need to have that same logic every time we want to use the redux store so instead we've put it into the slice itself and then we can just call that function so it seems like a good approach i think it might just take a little bit getting used to because creating all those nested functions and knowing which ones should be doing what that's the bit I don't know how I would really get on like just trying to do this myself but now I've practiced it once so you know a few more practices and I'd be flying so the same with everything you know you just need to practice it a few times so great let's continue So Max is just chatting here saying that it's handier to have your components a bit leaner and, you know, keeping all of this, all of this in our custom action creator in our Redux file is considered a good practice because our components are kept lean. Cool. Yeah, so that was a thunk, actually. That was a thunk action creator, a function that calls another function. So that's great. So that's why in our app.js here, we were able to pass a function, which was then calling other functions to do the putting the putting the data up onto the back end. So that's a thunk, a function that calls another function, which that was a new word to me, actually. I hadn't heard of a thunk before, so... You know, you learn something new every day, guys, especially here with me. So, yep. Cool. Yeah. So at the moment, we only are sending data to the back end. We haven't retrieved anything, you know. So if we have items in the cart and we reload our page, we're not getting the items from the cart in order to display them back on the page it resets it to zero so what we actually want to do is be able to get the information as well and say oh there's three items in the cart great we can save that state now so that's what we're going to do next yeah cool Cool. So now we're going to add this second action, which is getting the data back from the server. But because this cart slice is getting like super de duper big, um, it really is getting quite large. We're going to create a new file. I'm in the wrong file. We got a new file on the way. So if I go back to my cart slice here and take a look at this, like this is quite long. You know, we have a good few bits going on in here. And then there's also... All of our reducers are now minimized so there's even more stuff going on this is the functions to add and remove items to the cart so we're going to create a new file and this is going to be called cart actions .js so perfecto selecto mm -hmm. Cool. So we're going to move that whole send cart data function and put it into our actions because this is an action that we have created here. So I'll just cut this. So let me just undo that strange whatever. Oh, what am I doing? So my computer is running. Oh, so slow. It's running, running slowly. 
So I just want to undo my changes, you guys. Like, should am I undid? This was exported. I'm sure of it. Alright, so we need export here anyway. Because they were using this elsewhere. So export. Const send cart data. Cool. Let's wait for that error to go away. Okay, cool. Now I will minimize all this. I'll cut this. And I'll move it into our cart actions. Because we are creating a new cart actions file. That's going to store all of our actions. So great. So we're also going to need to import UI actions. Um, I don't know why it's not giving us an error because it really should. And I'll also just comment this out because I just start undoing things up above and it wasn't telling me what I was undoing. Okay, so now I'm going to say import UI actions. Cool. From UI slice and perfecto. and also we have used this function this exported function in our app.js so the file path is going to change now we've moved it somewhere else so rather than it being in our cart slice it's actually in our cart actions so we fix that and we should be all good mm -hmm. so now we'll add another function in our cart actions and the function we want to add so we have one to send the cart data and we're going to want one as well to fetch the cart data so say export const export cart data cool So we will return dispatch again, dispatch, which we're going to create another constant fetch data, another um, function, fetch data, which is going to be an asynchronous function. And in here, we're going to fetch the data. And this time we'll be getting the data. So the reason why we've put this into its own function here um, is because we want to run this in a try catch block later on. So by putting the fetch to fetch functionality, what we're going to do, so they're communicating with the API, getting that data back, you know, waiting for something. We need to send a request and wait for it either to come back successfully or negatively or fail, like a fail or a success. So we're going to be waiting for that. So that's why it's async. And the reason why we have put it into its own function here is because then we can try it later on. So in a try block, we can call fetch data. And then if something goes wrong, we can catch that error. So that's why we have chosen to set this up like this. So we'll await fetch because it's async. So we're gonna await for the fetch. And we will add our URL. And as I explained yesterday, guys, if you were watching, um, here we have a configuration object attached onto the end of our fetch. So we have our URL that we're fetching from, and then we have this object, which is configuring the fetch. And what it's saying here is we want to put something up, and the way we want to put it up is JSON stringify it. And what we want to stringify is the cart. Whereas when we're getting something from the api or from from the server uh we just need to pass in the url because it defaults to a get so you just pass in the url and you don't need any other configuration because if you don't pass anything else it just presumes it was a get so that's what we're doing here and this we will make this a another const call response because then we can use this elsewhere spot response is equal to this so we'll give it a name, you know, and then we can refer to it. Cool. Cool. 
Cool, so now what we'll do is once we have got this fetch data fetched, we'll create another constant and this will be equal to data. Const data is the name of the um, variable here and we're going to equal this to the awaited the awaited what we have gotten back so we're going to await the response and jsonify it so dot json and just pass in the brackets this is an inbuilt function that we can run on a response in order to get it back in a certain format a json format in this case and then we'll also just have our if response which i thought we didn't need but let's just stick it in and we'll figure it out here <laughs> if response is not okay is not okay then we want to throw an error so throw new error and we'll say could not get car data perfect So then if we get down here, then we know that the data was okay because, or the response was okay, I should say, because we have a check here to check if the response was not okay. So if it comes down here, we have indeed got our response. So we can return data, return. Cool. Yeah, and then we'll, we'll, then we'll make our try catch block and we can call this function. So actually try and catch if there was an error. So we'll say try to fetch data. So we'll run that function. And then in the case that we have an error, we will catch our error. Sorry. Catch error. Mm -hmm. And what we will do as well, once we have caught the error is we'll just dispatch, dispatch that same error notification that we've set up down below because we want to still tell that there was an error here. Excuse me, whether we're getting or we're sending the data, we have this show notification component set up that we can use. So again, we'll show a notification to inform the user that there was something wrong. So we might just change the message to say getting cart data failed. Getting cart data failed. So here we have an like none of this code is being executed because we have a return here. But This should be I think that's okay. Clearly this code isn't being touched at all because it's, you know, unreachable code detected. There you go. That's why it's not properly syntax highlighted. It looks a bit ghosty ghosty. Ooh, someone got a fright today. This code <laughs> So there's something wrong here with my parentheses. All right, so I'll just comment out my return for the moment because that's what's causing this. But from what I can see, that should return out of this function. And this is still, oh, is this because this is a return up here? Uh, or should they still be inside or something? Okay. There's something up with my brackets here, guys. So... Hmm. Maybe people are just shouting at the computer saying it's so obvious. 
Let me have a look. Okay. So whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, yeah, so this is closed prematurely. We still want our response. We need our response. So here we have our response, right, guys? We've named our response. And what our response is, we've just named a constant call response. And this is assigned to awaiting the result back from fetching our data from the back end. So we need to actually use that response here. So we need to keep that within the same block of code. So this should be in here as should this return and then if i move this up <laughs> did i say then really like and then so now if i put that there i think we should be okay uh, so now that's closing that and then this needs to go down the bottom yes 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 okay so are we missing a parentheses down here then looks like it yeah okay great so that's what it was i had not closed off my parentheses correct after this response and it makes sense because if we close this off here you know well then this response doesn't have access to this response maybe that's what happened down below as well that i just had a parentheses incorrect and i wasn't grabbing the response where i actually had access to the response so encoding scope is a big thing the scope of your functions will determine what variables you can use anywhere. So you might have some functions or, you know, um, some variables, some constants or some lets, like a variable that you've defined. Let's say perhaps you define up out here. And if you have it defined out here, well, everything can access it then because it's global. It's known as global. But once you start going into things, so say if I define something in here, I said const, which this is within this particular if block. This is where I am defining this variable. It's scoped within these two brackets here. So if I say const my variable, and let's just make it a Boolean, is equal to false. So now I have a Boolean in here, and now I want to rewrite it. We can just literally go right here, right outside of this bracket, uh, outside of the if block, sorry. So it now if we say, um, you know, my variable is equal to true. We shouldn't be able to access it there. So let's console log out variable. Console log my variable. Okay, so I have an even better idea. So we'll console log my variable oh and this none of this code is even reachable because we're doing it after we've thrown the error so that get ejects us out of this block as well which is why this code is unreachable so if we move this above the throw error when you're returning out when you have a return statement or throwing an error you're leaving that function then you're you've you've made a final decision to throw an error and that's you leaving the function then so code underneath it isn't going to execute most things you can just do in a flow and they will it's not going to affect you know being thrown out of the function but when you have a return or when you have when you throw an error you're leaving that you're leaving that block of code then you're saying okay i'm done i want to leave this block of code it's your way of signaling leave now so we were throwing an error so that's why it wasn't shown down below so and now if i just try and so there we go and i actually want to just also send out the the value of my variable so let's send out the value of this my variable and what i'll do down below here actually is just console log out my variable so console log and we should see that like we can't find it it won't be sent out as false because we shouldn't be able to see it that's what i would think anyway well this has all got to do with scoped variables do you know so this will be something else because you can only access this within these two blocks you know unless 
when you do return, you return with that variable and then that returns it back out to the larger component. So scope is just important and that's what was going wrong because we had closed off our asynchronous function all the way up here. So now the rest of the code can't be reached, you know, it's it doesn't have access to this response because it's only within these two parentheses. So I just had put my parentheses in the wrong place, my close and curly parentheses. So now because it closes down here, is this the closing one? Yes, everything in here has access to whatever is in there. It's scoped within that block. So that's what scope is all about. So now. Let's continue. Cool. Cool. Yeah, so my variable is not defined. See, we can't um we cannot find the variable on line fifteen because it is only scoped within here. It doesn't exist out here. You know, we've created it within these curly parentheses. So down here, it doesn't exist. Um, so that's what's going on there, you know. So if I just get rid of this line to sort of explain why we couldn't find other things down here, why data wasn't, why we were getting an error on return and then why things down here weren't working. It's because I had just closed off my function too soon. So it didn't have access to those things. So just little things to be aware of, you know. Ay, 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 mamma mia, grazie, mamma mia. So, <laughs> so we'll just go back up here and get rid of this line because we do not need you. You were just for an example and you're giving me errors, baby girl. So now if I reload, perfect. And then... So what we will do as well is down here we will await the result of fetch data and we can do this because this whole function is an asynchronous function I think. Now we have to actually turn it into one so here this needs to be async and then we can await the result and I'll just put dispatch into brackets because this can be passed in like this instead make it clear what we are doing and then we're going to await fetch data yeah and this is asynchronous as well okay cool and we will assign this to a variable so we can then use that variable so this is going to be constant this is our cart data because what's happening is this function the fetch data is coming all the way down here. So fetch data is here and what it returns out is our data. So that is just our cart data. So we just need to equal this to the awaited result of running the fetch data function. Cool. Cool. So when we sent our data to the back end with our push here, excuse me, when we sent the data to the back end with our push, we sent it in the right format because 
here we have our cart and what we've done is we have already told it in what format we want the cart to be so when we send it it's being sent up in the right format so then when we get it back we're going to get it back in the right format as well because we sent it to the back end in the right format to begin with okay so now what we're going to do in our cart actions we're going to link all this up so Yes, so first thing we want to do is import the cart actions from our cart slice. So here we have our cart actions being exported, which is the various actions we can perform. So if we go up here, we can say that we have replace cart, add item to cart. Cool. So, and what the replace cart is looking for, or what we get back from the replace cart function is the total quantity and the item. So the action.payload.total quantity and the action.payload.items. So in here in our actions, we can use these cart actions. So we will import cart actions. Actions, action, actions, cool. From cart slice and now where we're trying different things down here we can also try to dispatch our other function so to replace the cart so here we will dispatch another action or just a dispatch an action so we'll dispatch cart cart actions dot replace cart and we want to pass the cart data so now we just want to actually call that fetch in order to get the data back So in our app, we already have our use effect. And we have an is initial check. So what I'm presuming is before the is initial checked. Or we just create a new use effect that we want it to be. On the first render. Yeah, we want to see what we have in that card. So use effect. Okay, and we want to dispatch our custom cart action. So we'll dispatch fetch cart data. And this is a function we want to run. So we best add that to the array of to our imports here from our cart action. So we also have fetch cart data coming in. Yeah, and we're going to use that down below in our use effect, which does not have the is initial flag because we want it to run on the initial load of the page. And also like here we're passing in the cart and the dispatch we don't really need to pass any dependencies here but we are dependent on dispatch so we can put dispatch into an array to say that we are dependent on it because we are so great cool. so now fetch cart data is not exported okay so back in our cart actions mm.
So it should be export cart, cart data, not fetch. So let's change that. It's going to be export cart data. And then also we need to import export cart data and save. Because that was actually the name of the function that we exported from our cart actions. The function that's going to get that cart data for us. It wasn't called fetch. So now... We shouldn't have anything incomplete in there. Cool. So it just hadn't properly reloaded. So now if we add stuff to the cart. We're getting an error. Okay. So cannot read properties undef undefined. Reading find. Add item to the cart. Okay. So. This was working a moment ago, so we, we must have broke it somewhere else. This can't be where it has broken, you know. We've only added in a certain amount of extra code. And that function was fine before. So we'll figure out where it's falling over. Line 17 of cart slice. So let's see. And we have an error here. So let's check this out. It's saying it cannot read find, but it must be coming before that because this was fine a moment ago. So card slice JS line 17, which is here. So when we're adding something to the cart, okay, we have our state and our action. We have our new item, which is our action dot payload. And if we have an existing item, we want to check that we have that and update the total quantity. So yeah, when we first start off, we don't have anything, but still, that shouldn't be it. So let's just see for absolute pig iron's sake here, if we comment out the existing item check. So just to check if something is already in the cart, can it add a new item to the cart? Will it add a new item to the cart or will it still fall over? Because then we have narrowed it down to this particular block of code and we need to do a check, some sort of a check to say, well, if there's nothing there, okay, continue. And if there is something there, then that's okay as well. So I'll just comment this out for a minute and see how we get on because this is narrowing down our error. And do I need this? Oh yeah, yeah, well we can't just have an else hanging around without an if. So I'll also just get rid of the else and these brackets. And then does existing item exist? No, we are creating existing item up here. So how do we add just something to the cart? New item. So if we don't have an existing item, okay, that does make sense. If there's no existing item, let's just, okay, yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's telling us existing item isn't defined because it's not. So here, I still think this has to be somewhere else because why wasn't this falling over earlier? You know? If it's gonna fall over, it should have fell over. <laughs> um so now existing item. Reading find find. Our state should be being passed in. No, are we not importing something properly? Card slice. <laughs> Do we need our actions in here? No, because we have moved them all out. So let me just uncomment this. That was, I thought we had code for adding a new item and then code for adding an existing item. But first, what we do is we just assign new item to the action dot payload and then straight away we check have we already got an item of that in the. Yeah, so we're checking if we do not have existing item, so I might be able. 
to just get rid of this if and the else and then say if it will add a new item to our cart just to know that much so now if i get rid of existing item we don't have that find error and we can see well is is there something else going on here or is that what it actually is you know but i don't know if i'm just being a bit too jumping on things here rather than carefully examining okay so now if i add something to the cart we still have an error that's okay cannot read properties of undefined reading push on a cart slice line 19 yeah it sort of didn't know how that was going to go down cannot read properties of undefined so we're not getting our state it looks like so what i'll do is i'll come up here and i'll console log out our state and our action because when we add something to the cart, this is the function that we're running and we're expecting two things to come in. So if something isn't going in, that explains why we are having this error. So let's console log out state and action. So just by putting it in these parentheses like this in these, sorry, um, quotes, single quotes, then we just have a string, something we can have a look at, a string in the console, and then we have our value beside it. Then I'll just put them beside each other and save. So yes, you put, this is just a string, and then you separate it by a comma. So then I want to console, put into the console the actual value that's in state. So this will tell me whether it's null, undefined, whether we have a state, whether we don't have a state. Then separate it by another comma. I want to pass in another string here just so I can see the word action in the console and then another comma and then this will be whatever is stored in this action that we have that we're passing in so this will tell me exactly what's coming into this function now hopefully <laughs> it should do like it definitely definitely should do I just you know don't want to be too overconfident now here because something's going wrong and your girl's trying to figure out what it is. So the first thing that should come out, yeah, here we go, is our state and our action. So we're having things there. Okay, so something is happening. That's great. So this is our state. I don't really know what a state is supposed to look like, but this, you know, looks pretty statey. Like there's something definitely going on here. So, okay, like at least something's being passed in for that, you know, so that's okay. I'm not, I didn't know what to expect from a state. Well, surely it should have our previous state should be in there. Like it should have the value of our state, no? So does that mean we don't have a state or I don't know what to expect for a state. And then here, our type, yeah. So cool. So we're passing in our action. And why is our type so long? I guess I should really know what to expect from these things to know whether or not it's the correct thing coming out, you know? But yeah, this all looks okay to me, really. Like, we have something there in our state. It's an object. So something's going on. But everything seems to be false. And I would have honestly expected, like, our initial state to be in this object as well. Because that's what the state should be. Well, our initial state is empty. We don't have anything in the cart. So, okay. And then, for our action... Do you know what? Just because it's easier for me to read. I'm going to duplicate this line, not just that bit, you messer. The whole line and put these into their own console logs because it just, this is how I would normally do it. I was just trying to be like, do it in a jiffy, make it a bit quick, sure there was no time saved and my brain will process this better if they're in their own console log statements. So let's reload the page and just figure this hullabaloo out. 
this is what coding is all about guys you know sometimes you get uh, errors and let's just go and clean up these unused things as well just it shouldn't be causing any errors but you know we have some warnings so it's best to clear them out especially if we're working through some some things that are going wrong here so or just general development you know i wouldn't even say going wrong this is just part and parcel of the process so if you find yourself in a similar situation don't be thinking oh no you know this this happens guys so you know it's part and parcel of it and you just gain the skills to figure these things out the more and more you do it so you know don't worry and then if i save those errors should go away so i probably should have spoke through those a little bit better but basically we just had some unnecessary usings here so it was defined but it was never used so if i just go back to the last one and show you that so use state is in the imported array from react here but we can see it's grayed out so we haven't used it anywhere in the file we must have been using it somewhere else but we we're not using use state now this is something else this is something we're calling state this is use dispatch use selector so if we were using state it would be like that we would say use state and use the parentheses so we're not using it we must have been using it previously so i can take it out and just get rid of those warnings for a clear console and a clear brain for figuring out where we actually are falling over <laughs> yeah so cool so let me just reload this page because i don't know why they have not gone away because we've taken them out now okay and then we have responses assigned but is never used and that could definitely cause an error because we need to do something with our response for shizzle so if i go to my character actions this could be causing all this problem but we still don't know let's just not jump ahead and think woohoo i have it solved because <laughs> like i would love to think that so here on line 47 this response is never being used okay so we did say that if we wanted to throw an error and catch an error this should be done where we can still access this so we need to do that here because this is where we have access to that response within these two parentheses so let's see now if i uncomment doesn't like that okay no so it's actually yeah 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 because we're still within our fetch here so this is the fetch this is the open parentheses for the fetch this is the url we are fetching from and then this is the parameters that were passed with the fetch so we're still within our fetch here we're too close now we're still a level in too deep so if i get rid of that and this is where we need to put it so this is outside of the fetch which is its own thing we're passing the url we're passing the parameters we're closing off the fetch here we have access to the response so if i uncomment this now everything looks okay i'm going to tab in here if we have an error we just throw an error that we don't need to res we don't need to return let's uncomment this and just see what happens but i think yeah it'll just go um gray to tell us well you know throwing an error is returning anyway so we can get rid of that i'm just going to align all this up because my eyes hurt okay cool and now let's save and see what happens now because we should have cleared up another thing it looks like we have introduced a few more things but we'll figure that out that's okay so let's reload again okay great looking good looking okay we don't have errors on the page load so that's positive let's add something to the cart oh i got my hopes up for a moment i got excited da -da 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 -da. now my heart is sinking no i'm only messing as i said it's part and parcel of the process guys you know we have to go through this sometimes 
So now here's our state. Here's our action. Here's our payload. This is what we're passing. That all looks okay. I don't know whether the state looks okay. But our state won't be null initially. So like there's something being passed in. Fair enough we don't see anything in there. But we don't have anything initially. So I think that looks okay as well. So that means something else is going on. So maybe now that we know we have our state and our action. Do we have our existing item? let's check and if not because we cleared up a few other little small things i'm not really expecting this to be fixed to be honest because we didn't do anything to fix it but you never know do you know you just never know and logic would tell me eh -eh. but do you know let's just have a whirl and see where we stand and then think about this more a bit more in depth so cool and this shouldn't be running on an initial page load either. Right, so we still have an error. Well, guys, we still can't find what we're looking for. And I still haven't found what I'm looking for. You're like, please stop singing. But anyway, we still haven't found what we're looking for. So you too, a bit of you too, Irish band, if anyone's interested. um, Yeah, there you go. But, you know, we've hit the hour. I need a break. So <laughs> we've hit the hour and sometimes, you know, just taking a break is a good idea. So I'm sure I'll come in and solve this in a jiffy tomorrow. So, you know, there's no point in scraping around, especially not when I've hit the hour. No, I'm just making a quick escape, but I've done my error. So thanks so much for joining me, guys. Lily Code on another episode of 100 Days of Code. Send in love, send in peace, send in good vibes. Have a wonderful day for yourselves and thank you so much for coming to spend some time with me. I really appreciate it. If you do like my stuff, please do like and subscribe because it means the world to me and more people can just like enjoy it if you have enjoyed it. So look, have a wonderful day. Enjoy, be good to yourselves, be good to people around you. That's all I ask. It's a big ask, but give it a go. Uh, I, I give it a go too sometimes we don't always do it but do your best and if not don't be hard on yourself so just have a nice day <laughs> okay bye guys <laughs>